Welcome or welcome back. My name is Syed and welcome to Claydesk, your number one e-learning channel. Today, I'm going to talk about AWS Cloud Engineer and not only what a cloud engineer does, but how do you actually start, right? So if you're a beginner, if you're thinking of getting into AWS or cloud computing, I'm going to walk you through, give you a complete roadmap step by step so you have a solid understanding and of course a guide so you can follow these steps so as a principal architect for example or it enterprise architect i've been through all of these challenges and i've trained thousands of students uh, who have actually become successful cloud engineers whether solutions architects devops engineers and you name it so let's stick to what aws cloud engineer is because that's the foundational that you want to get into and I'm going to give you those steps. So let's dive right in and talk about what AWS Cloud Engineer basically is and how do you actually start your journey. So the AWS Cloud Engineer is a professional responsible for designing, implementing, and maintaining cloud solutions around Amazon Web Services, okay? So the primary focus revolves around leveraging AWS services and build scalable and secure infrastructure for organizations. The responsibilities of a cloud engineer are mainly, I'm going to focus on the high level responsibilities. So, you know, step by step what to look for and how to prepare your journey getting into cloud first is designing AWS architecture. So before, when you talk about architecture, we mean that, hey, how does AWS work? How do these services within AWS or within the AWS cloud platform are integrated? How do they relate to each other, right? Um, for example, if you are uh, deploying an application, well, what else do you need, okay? So the architecture, how does the network architecture works, the VPCs work, the um, other underlying architecture works when you deploy or build scalable applications on the AWS platform. So this is where the AWS architecture comes in and you need to have a solid understanding of how the AWS cloud platform actually works, right? And all these services. So that's the first responsibility of a cloud engineer if you wanna get into AWS. Number two, or before I get into number two, uh, just briefly, uh, what uh, types of architecture can be designed? Well, basically, it's cloud-based solutions considering scalability, reliability, security, and cost optimization, which is basically the pillars of AWS well-architected framework, the, the basic foundations, right? So you need to be well-versed with AWS architectures. So focus on understanding different types of architectures that AWS you can deploy on that platform. And number two is implementing and then deployment which means deploying all these uh, services or your scalable applications on AWS cloud, right? And how do you actually deploy? Well, implementation and deployment simply means that you deploy the applications or databases and other services on the AWS architecture itself, utilizing various AWS services such as EC2, S3, AWS Lambda, RDS, and so forth, CloudTrail, CloudWatch, and so on. There are many, many services that you can actually deploy based on your architecture, right? So the first was the architecture. The second is actually deploying and implementing these services within your defined architecture. Number three is automation and orchestration. Well, once you have deployed, well, then you're not going to do things manually, right? So the goal of a cloud engineer is to make sure that you automate all the tasks. So if your application that you're deploying uh, needs automation or to remove redundancy, that's where you would do. So for example, you can use tools like AWS CloudFormation or AWS Resources or other third-party tools like Terraform. So there are many, many other tools they can actually use to automate the entire pipeline, right? That's the software development pipeline where also known as the DevOps pipeline, where your application runs through it, right? Your code runs through it. So you can automate those tasks. So for that, you may need some little bit of scripting knowledge, but no programming experience or is required to get into this, right? So 
AWS um, automation and orchestration is the third responsibility of the cloud engineer. Now, fourth is monitoring and optimization. So, of course, once you've deployed, once you've automated, well, guess what? Well, you need to shorten the time, right, or become more efficient. So your application needs to work efficiently, and that's really uh, when you need to focus on the uh, monitoring and performance of the application. Because if you can save time uh, for your company, right, by not only automating, but actually making things efficient, work efficiently, boom, there you go. You'll have certain credibility within the organization. And number five is security implementation. Well, of course, that's pretty obvious, but um, my experience shows that that's probably the least part sometimes people focus on, right? So once they deploy, they automate, and they say, well, hey, everything works perfectly, be done with it. Well, guess what? Security is actually very, very important. So implement security measures following AWS best practices, for example, or you can work closely with teams, providing guidance and utilizing AWS services effectively, okay? You can also work with teams like uh, development teams or uh, operations teams to troubleshoot and then of course make things more secure and that's important. So what are the skills required now, right? So once you understand the roles and responsibilities of a cloud engineer, well, how do you actually start? Where do you start? How do you get into it? What skill do you actually need um, to get into it? Well, number one is AWS proficiency. So you need to get, log on to the cloud platform. AWS has a free tier account. There's nothing to it. Just, uh, you know, I'll put a link in the description. You can click on it and just uh, sign up for the AWS platform and then start to understand the interface itself, right? You can watch my other videos. We'll have hands-on tutorials. Of course, tons and tons of uh, resources are available. You can go to blog.claydash.com and check those out or just watch some videos, right? So once you log on to the AWS platform, you need to become proficient with AWS uh, infrastructure, right? Different services. You need to have in-depth knowledge and hands-on experience with various AWS services and their integration. And then secondly, networking and security concepts. These are important. So if you don't know IP addressing or subnetting or how a CIDR blocks work, how do you actually create subnets? Well, that's the basic foundation. So go check out the IP address and subnetting course right here on YouTube for free. You can check that out and learn. So you need to have solid understanding of networking concepts. And then three is automation and scripting. As I mentioned earlier, you may need a little bit of scripting like bash script or just a few lines of code well no programming you don't need to know python or java or none of that stuff just basic scripts and that's really straightforward right so you can actually use that and then for database and infrastructure because since all these services any application that you actually deploy or create and use on the aws platform well guess what it needs to have a back end right so the back end is where all the data is stored and that application is actually fetching data and then throwing it out to the client right or the front end so Understanding basic concepts of database infrastructure, knowledge of database management systems, serverless architecture, and infrastructure as code principles such as cloud formation and how does it work. That's where AWS proficiency would come in. And of course, you need to be tech savvy because troubleshooting is key because no matter what you deploy, how you deploy it, there definitely are going to be times where you'll have to troubleshoot, right? And problem solving skills are also needed. So the ability to diagnose and resolve issues in the cloud environment, for example. Now, optimizing performance is very, very important. And uh, number six, I'm going to give you another uh, area, communication and collaboration. Well, we typically work in a team environment, right? So all cloud engineers, whether it's architects, cloud engineers, DevOps engineers, developers, or support professionals, they're all working as a team or a project manager, for example, right? So you need to have good skills in terms of communication and collaboration, okay? Because you're not wo working in a silo environment or a solo, right? It's not a solo flight, guys. It's a team building or team skills. So no matter what uh, role you are within the organization, you definitely need some uh, good communication and collaboration skills. So strong communication skills to collaborate with cross-functional teams uh, and convey complex technical information clearly. And that's the skill you need to work on. All right, so the career path, simple career path of AWS cloud en engineers typically start with a foundation knowledge of cloud computing. Then you gain hands-on experience with AWS services. Like I mentioned, just log onto the platform, start working on some projects, 
follow some tutorials, right? And that's how you become proficient. So, and next, once you have some proficiency, then you get into getting certified. So you become a certified cloud practitioner, certified solutions architect, whether associate or professional, certified DevOps engineer, um, security specialty, and so on. There are many, many certifications that you can actually look into based on your own, you know, area where you want to be, how do you want to go, and which is uh, something that you really like, whether if you're into security, well, guess what? There's a certification for that. If you're into architecture, well, there's a certification for that as well. So you can become a solutions architect, right? So that's where you would end up as getting into the AWS certifications because they simply validate your skills. So once you get AWS certified, the employers or other you know people looking recruiters, for example, they would know that, hey, you have those skills because you have a certification. So they constantly update the skills to adapt to new technologies because just because you get certified and you know the skills, well, guess what? Technology is changing every day, right? So make sure that you keep up with your skill level. All right, so becoming an AWS cloud engineer involves a blend of like education, like skills, hands-on experience, certifications, and continuous learning, right? Now I'm gonna give you the comprehensive roadmap, just like I promised, step-by-step on how you can become an AWS cloud engineer. And that's really a certain process, right? So the first, uh, like I mentioned earlier, is the foundation knowledge. So basic understanding, familiarize yourself with cloud computing concepts, different tools, learn about AWS services, their purpose and use cases. Just go through some of the concepts, right? And then use those concepts and then apply those concepts uh, so that you actually get into some small projects, right? And that's the, the, the learning part. And you also need to know Linux, by the way, and some scripting languages like Python, but that's not really uh, mandatory, right? So if you can get into that, that's, that's good. That's a good thing to do, right? That's not bad, but it's not really required for you to get into it. So understanding or working with certain scripts, that would be perfect. And then if you're pursuing a degree, that's perfectly all right. But let me give you some good news, guys. You do not need a degree to get a job as an AWS cloud engineer. And that's pretty exciting, right? Because as you're pursuing a degree, or even if you do not pursue a degree, that's perfectly fine. What's important is the skill or the skills that you actually are getting and the hands-on knowledge that you're getting so that you can apply it. And on top of that, the AWS certifications, right? Because getting certified certified is actually telling everyone that, hey, you're, you have those skills. So a, a degree is not required. But if you're pursuing a degree, that's pretty good, right? All right, hands-on experience. I cannot say you know more about that because hands-on is key to learning, just like you learn to drive a car, right? So unless and until you sit in the car and drive, uh, you will not know how to drive, right? So that's exactly how you would get into AWS uh, platform. You do some projects, you learn, you watch some tutorials, you watch some video, you take some courses. And, and of course, everything is available here on this channel where you can have full courses for free that I've created in, right here on this channel. So whether you want to become uh, AWS cloud practitioner or a solutions architect, boom, you're in the right place. All right, check those out when you get time. So hands-on experience is... Practice projects, create an AWS free tour account, and start working on projects. Build simple applications, deploy them using AWS services like EC2, S3, RDS. Experiment with automation tools like CloudFormation and third-party tools like Terraform. Once we have those basics, then get into getting some internships or entry-level jobs, right? And apply uh, for those jobs, um, create yourself a nice resume, um, and then, of course, reach out to recruiters on LinkedIn. That's a, it's a very good platform to actually network with potential uh, employers. AWS certifications are of course uh, a key because boom, you have the certifications. Everyone would know that you have skills already, right? So these certifications basically delve deeper into the designing and implementation, uh, advanced to certifications like AWS Solutions Architect Professional, or AWS Certified DevOps Engineer, right? Professional, these certifications validate expertise in designing and implementing scalable and deploying those applications on the AWS platform. So once you gain expertise in specific AWS uh, services, for example, related to your chosen field, whether it's security, whether it's architecture, for example, 
Make sure you're continuously learning, you're reading the documentation, you're doing additional projects. And of course, real world projects would also be very, very helpful. So working on real world projects or contribute to open source projects involving AWS, right? And as you're actually uh, doing this, right? Document your experiences. Make sure you're documenting, you're writing stuff down, you're writing your projects, you're writing steps. And because these steps would help you um, at later stage, because once you are into a certain real life project, you would have some notes for yourself, right? So these are really, really helpful uh, because you can always refer back and you don't have to remember all of these that you do, right? All right, so I talked about certifications, uh, continuous learning, and that's really what it is. So remember the key to success in cloud engineering field is a combination of theoretical knowledge as well as practical experience, continuous learning, and a passion for innovation in cloud technologies. So this is the roadmap they're gonna actually follow to become an AWS cloud engineer. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions, post your questions in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer if you have any specific question. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer and then guide you to the process. My name is Syed. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.